Hey, hey guys, hey. Good morning, welcome to another episode of Coffee with Shamari. This is episode 7 of season 2, and today I have. Me! <laughs> and me is. Iana Tiku Garcia. And who is Iana Tiku Garcia? Miss Universe Jamaica 2019. Oh, I should Look probably add some about this. <laughs> And we're going to be talking about, we don't have a topic, we're just going to be talking. Okay. Yeah. Alright, um, but before we talk, I have something that I wanted to do, this is called What Would They Do? And I tried this the other day and I'm going to do it again with you, because it has been requested. Mm. What would they do? So I'm going to give you a scenario, give me a celebrity, and you're going to give me the response that they would give in that scenario. Okay. Alright, so, what would... Beanie Man and Bounty Killer say if they met Rihanna. I don't think I can say that on camera. <laughs> <laughs> can say it. <laughs> can I give me the clean version. <laughs> um, I can't imagine. I, I imagine would be a lot of excitement and a lot of. Yeah. Yeah. Remember when he bought to see on the verse, he was like, "Ri ri, ri ri, you yeah. see me," <laughs> and um. What would Michael Jackson say if he was tickled? Where do you get these things? Just <laughs> work with it. This is the tagline. <laughs> uh, my last one is, what would Spice say if she saw a man that she liked? Well, Spice. <laughs> I really. I like try to think of one thing, <laughs> just one. I really, I really want to hear you say this. I'm gonna come back. We're gonna come back to that. Let me see. I have two in my head. Right? All right, say, say them, say them, say the two that you have in your head. No, I can't. I can't. I really can't. You can't say it. What would you? What would you say? I mean, what as spice? I don't know, I'm asking you, I'm not Spice. You know, I'm right. <laughs> I'm the furthest from Spice. <laughs> the worst. In so many ways. But um, we're gonna we're gonna come back to okay, that, but before the show back. ends, we definitely have to hear what Spice would say if she saw a guy that she liked. What do you guys think Spice would say if she saw a guy that she liked? You can even tag her and ask her. Yeah, Spice, if you're watching this, tell us. Hopefully you're watching. That would be amazing if you're watching. Alright, moving on. So, Iana is gonna tell me about, a little bit about herself before we like go into the dark questions. The dark questions. <laughs> okay, so as I said before, my name is Iana Tico Garcia. I'm Miss Universe Jamaica 2019. And something about me. I'm 20 years old. I'm originally from Montego Bay. Um, that's where I met you. Yes, yeah, that's where I met you. Um, and let me think. I'm going to give you a random fact. Uh, something that a lot of people don't know about me is that I actually know a lot of random facts. Like, and I'll just put it there. A random like, fact is that she knows a lot of random yes, facts. So I'll give you one. In Switzerland, it is illegal to own just one guinea pig. Just one. So you have to own two because you yeah. can't live alone. Yeah. So it's oh. actually illegal. It's against the law. You can't just own have one. one. That's, that's, I, I, I didn't know that. that. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Guys, by the way, the countdown to my new glasses are done. But I had a, I have a little confession to make. So remember I told you I was ordering my glasses. I don't remember if I told you guys that it was going to be transition lens. But I checked back my order and I realized that I ordered 80% sunglasses. So this isn't because of the sun. They're always this dark. I can see, but it's like super dark. So I'm ordering new ones that are regular, <laughs> normal, and are clear that I can see out of. But I got them, and I also have my name, Kafuit Sham, yeah. on the side. So there's progress. So I'm glad I got my glasses. The old ones were... I'm going to show you a picture. Let me just like how blind are you? Like Very blind. Like when I went to the, the, the doctor the other day, the lady asked me if this eye is working. She's like, you see out of this one? <laughs> Alright, so here's a photo. Of my old glasses. Oh my gosh. I'm going to put it oh on the screen. <laughs> like, it's terrible. <laughs> they were like falling off my face. 
But I have these now. And these are definitely an upgrade. Yeah, they're by nice. far. And they're cheaper too because they're, they're from an online site. But yeah, anyways, let's get into it. Too. Get okay. into it. At what age did you decide you wanted to be in the pageant? I was eight years old. The first time I ever saw a pageant, I was... Miss Congeniality? No. <laughs> I was actually staying here in Kingston, we came on like a little family vacation and in the hotel they were playing it on TVJ and it was the first time I ever saw like Miss Jamaica or anything and I was just like, I was in awe, I was in front of the TV and I was just like, oh my That's god. That's what, 2004? 2008. 2008. Yeah. And 12 years ago. I was just like, that, from then I was just like, I kind of want to do that but I was always shy. I would be at the back of the room, I wouldn't want to say it. Like, I was the type of person, if my mom sent me to a store, I would be hiding behind it the entire time. And I wouldn't want to say hi to anyone or want to buy my own stuff. That was the type of person I was before. So I never thought it would be possible. Um, but as I grew older, I was just like, this is something that I actually want to pursue. And as you said before, we having a conversation before, and it's it was basically me becoming comfortable with being uncomfortable. uncomfortable yeah um so i stepped out and i was doing all these things that i wasn't used to and that's how i got here really and truly i just decided to go out on a limb and to just do it if i don't make it then i don't make it god has other plans for me but if i do then well here i am that's that's something yeah. i've really like started to accept like failing stuff mm -hmm. or not being as good as stuff as you want to be it's either you keep on trying or you just say all right this is not for me and mm -hmm. understand that okay i'm not going to be a footballer not that mm -hmm. I, <laughs> <laughs> i'm not going to be a footballer because like it's too late it's it's also never too late but like you have to you have to look in yourself and say is it something i really want to do like mm -hmm. am i willing to go the extra mile to do this and accept that if you fail, like it's not the end of the world, you should not go into like depression and say, Alright, I failed at this or whatever. You must you must you must just understand that I did not do well this time, I can try again. And I think something that people are often confuse is that yeah, you're supposed to have tunnel vision, you're supposed to go after what you want. But sometimes we're so focused on this one goal that we forget to take a step back and look at all of the other opportunities and that we have. And all the things that we can do. Exactly. And sometimes you just have to like have a conversation with yourself and say, why is it that I really want it? Because then I think is when you decide, am I going to continue chasing it or should I step back and you know go another avenue? Something else. Because if it's not something that you genuinely want and maybe something that you know your parents told you or someone people always told you you'd be good at it's not really something that you want but because you know maybe i'd be successful i'll just chase it instead you know and a lot of children i think become very uncomfortable or very they feel pressured by their parents sometimes because your yeah. parents say yo you have to become a doctor you have to do this and i spoke about this with um dale some time ago about how children aren't pushed sometimes to be creatives yeah so they don't they don't their parents don't necessarily push them to get up and go start a youtube channel okay. or do video editing or something but my mother has always been like that type of parent push and say yo this is what you love do it i remember i wanted to be a chef every time you watch a show you and you see some a, a new occupation you want to be the occupation yeah so that was me i watch a chef show i won't be a chef because i see that person cooking and i can do that too i have an older brother that's a chef um i want to I wanted, to be, I wanted to be a doctor for the long I mean everybody wanted to be a doctor yeah. but like I wanted to be a doctor no I did not want to be a doctor no, no, not you. <laughs> I, I was going to be Dr. Watson and it's not too late yeah. and then I wanted to be a surgeon um I wanted to be a vet that was a really long standing one mm -hmm. until the cat scraped me Chalice may her soul rest in peace scraped me and I was like no, no, I'm not going to get used to this. No. I think it's really important that parents allow you to pursue what you your want. dreams. As long as you be successful. Exactly. My mom always told me no matter what I do, she'll always support me. My parents overall have been very supportive. As I said, I, no one expected that I would enter a beauty pageant because I was just so shy. I That wasn't my scene at all. And when one day I came home and I said, you know, I'm taking this seriously. I had all of the support. They were backing me 100%. And whenever I felt like I was falling back into my old routine, I was procrastinating, or I wasn't working hard enough, I was just reminded, Anna, you want to do this, and we're going to make sure that you do it. Like They were always there for me, my friends and my family, always super supportive. And I think that's really important 
um, to have good energy around you, to have good energy, and to have people who will push you and motivate you. Because sometimes motivation it runs out. No matter how much you want something, self motivation runs out. Motivation sometimes. runs out, and that's when discipline steps in. And discipline sometimes you need people to you know hold you accountable sometimes. So if I say I go in gym every day and then. Like, I always start sacking off. I'm just like, I can't bother her. Right My mom will be like, Anna, she get aggressive with me sometimes, <laughs> you know, but she knows it's because I need to do it and she knows what's best for me. She's like, you need to go to the gym. Start playing around and get there. With so, being disciplined, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, tell your friends. Mm -hmm. I always forget to say that because sometimes I'm like, mm -hmm. you have to promote yourself. Yeah. Like it, share, you heard comment. It from Miss Universe. Yes. Um, so, yeah, that's another thing discipline and having people around you that will discipline you and push you because like to have certain quality content my brother is very specific um when i'm shooting or when i'm saying stuff because he edits most of the videos and he's always like yo shamar i wanted to do it a certain way speak this way not necessarily like my style but like do this do that whatever so it can come out good like guidelines yeah guidelines and i've been following them and he's taught me a lot my brother has taught me so much and the thing is um as you say how your mommy is aggressive with you that's how he is with me sometimes especially when he's teaching me to edit he's very yo my, <laughs> my brother would like expect me to know something that he's never taught me before or like you know it's obvious i'm like no I, just to, I don't even i don't mind the aggression because i'm like i know where it's coming it's coming from a place hey, i love, love. <laughs> and wanting you to succeed and when you see someone that genuinely wants to see you succeed it, you feel of, good. You feel good. You're mm. just like, wow, you step back and you say, aside from, you know, the aggression, you're just like, this person Loves then me. wants the best for me. Yeah. So as I say, yeah, it has a lot to do with being comfortable with being uncomfortable. That's what I'm going to name this. Mm -hmm. um, stepping out of your comfort zone. But with that comes a lot of negativity. Um, so I want you to tell me like some of the negative comments or things that you've had to experience along this journey. Like before you won and after you won. Okay, so before I won, I mean, you always see these really cliche things on TV about beauty pageant. Not necessarily, I'm not talking about the whole cat fighting, mm -hmm. but you always see like there's all these chat rooms and stuff online talking about the girls. I didn't really believe that that was true. I, I, I thought thing. it was like a TV thing, um, just like the whole cat fighting thing, because there was none of that pettiness with us. Um, so I just thought it was a TV thing. And I kind of got sucked into it. Like, as much as people say, don't look on what people are saying about you on the internet, you kind of want to know what the public thinks. I'm not going to lie and say I was above it and I didn't care. I looked at them and it really did get to me. And I would sometimes feel really bad about it because they'd be like, oh, she's too fat or... You? She, yeah. <laughs> she's too fat or she doesn't have the look or um, Jamaica <laughs> Jamaica is really not bringing it this year and I would look on it and I was just like I felt so confident within myself because I slowly but surely the confidence was building and then I'd see this and it was like it was threatening to shatter all of it like all that you've worked on is like exactly like, like one they were person picking can, at everything and one pick one good pick can just mm -hmm. destroy everything that you've, exactly. that you've built but again it has to do with your support system and everything so i would go and i would tell my friends and my family that i was feeling a certain way because so and so said this and they're like okay you know we understand that you feel that way but you can't care about what they're saying like that because you don't know who they are they're not paying no bills for you they're not contributing to you in any single in any way and they could never do what you are doing right now so take everything that they say with a grain of salt and just work on yourself to make it better so if they said she walked like a horse because I did get that one <laughs> um, she walked like a horse trust and believe that you do not walk like a horse but just work on your walking skills more so that when you go out and step on that runway nobody would call you a horse exactly nobody can talk to you too tough so it's just to look at what they're saying take it with a grain of salt and know that there might be some truth behind it, yeah, but they're being especially that. bitter about mm -hmm. it because they don't want to see you succeed. So I, I kind of just I blocked it. Like I could no, I no longer allowed myself to look at it. I actually had to block the site so that I wouldn't be tempted to go on and look at it. But that really did affect some me. Some people are harsh, though. They are. 
ex- extremely harsh. There's In the own people, the there's the, the, like I was talking about the person who spoke about the BCs. Mm-hmm. It's like sometimes the people that you expect to be surprised because it's Jamaica, like yours. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking, no, all right, we're going to give her some positive guidelines, some positive notes, like so she can do better because she's representing us. Yes. And people are out here, like tearing you down, and they don't understand, you know, like they always say sticks and stones break bones. Words, yeah. No, words, words are hurtful. Words are very hurtful. So we have to learn how to, like, look beyond those or find something within that negativity to turn it into a positive um what are you doing now the recycling thing yes yeah, so my initiative like what i am miss university Jamaica, and i do like to go about doing different initiatives and contributing to different charities my main platform what i was using my platform for was recycling and my tagline is i recycle what's your superpower oh that's nice um, so basically, what I had imagined for it was that I would make recycling as common as just regular throwing away trash. I mean, we're not all good at that, we're working on it, but just to um, make it available and accessible for everyone. So you'd be so you have an excuse, like, yeah. I can't recycle So you'd be there's... walking on the street, and where you'd see a regular trash can, you'd also see a recycling bin. That is my end goal, that's my vision. Um, because right now you see that they have it in the hotels and they'll have it in like really huge corporations but you're like the people the majority who don't go in these places exactly they need to get used to it as well because in the era that we are now it's kind of important we need to take care of our environment if we want our children and our grandchildren to to have somewhere we need to you know take initiative from now I ran into a lot of issues with that, um, so I've kind of had to say, all right, you know, that is my big picture, but I have to start from small. Mm-hmm. So what I've been doing is really putting it in businesses that, like, I'll see it and I'm like, oh, you want a bin? Or they'll come to me, because now mm. people are coming to me, nice, like, do you want good. a bin? And schools, because I believe that it starts, it the starts there, because I was trying to put it in colleges and stuff, and I realized that they're already kind of broken in their ways mm-hmm. you can try with them but you yeah. can also try with the children exactly so i say i'm trying it with them because it's never too late to learn mm-hmm. but you need to teach them from young so that you don't have to be like pushing so or hard to un- change teaching them to un- unlearn yes helping unlearn. them to unlearn something yeah. yeah so that's what i'm doing currently and this really stems from my sister she is really like I describe her as an environmentalist. She's the one that got me into it. Like if I was using too much. How many plastic, siblings do you have? I actually only have one biological oh, sibling. Yeah. My younger brother. But I have these really close friends that I refer to as my siblings. So she she's my sister. Nobody can tell me differently. Mm-hmm. Um so she would get me she got me to recycling. We started composting at the house. Um before the whole plastic ban we were carrying our own shopping bags. Like, <laughs> it was that type of thing. So I wouldn't say that me, myself, I wouldn't say that I'm an environmentalist, but it also comes to back what I was saying about discipline. I may not be as passionate for it, like it comes to me instinctively, mm-hmm. but well, I know that it's important, that. Mm-hmm. you know? I think that everyone, not everyone is going to be an environmentalist, not everyone is going to be passionate about it, but we do all live here, so we do all have... We're all stakeholders. Exactly, we have a responsibility to do this. and. I think that I'm just trying to allow people to recognize that responsibility and, and giving give them, them the, the ability to, you know, make use of it. So what, so what 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 can they do now to help? What can the people do now to help further your cause or your initiative? Well, while I am trying to get it around the island, what you can do now is just educate yourself. There are, a lot of people don't even realize that there's actually places where you can go and drop off your bottles. There's recycling depots all over Jamaica and a lot of um, companies and businesses also take plastic bottles and they themselves would give it to the recycling partners of Jamaica. Some people give you money for those plastic bottles. Exactly. Recycling partners of Jamaica actually um, gives you money for bottles. You can go on their website and they will tell you, but they give you money. It's like an incentive. Mm -hmm. I personally don't believe that you need an incentive. That's what I was about to say. You don't need an incentive to take care of your own environment. But, you know, if that's how they see that, you know, to start it up, I think that's really important. I think that has been working. So you can drop your bottles off. There's plenty of places to drop it. Chilitos, 
Yeah, also, there's a big one by yeah, Chili Sauce. I don't know that one. They do it there. So there's different businesses, and it's really a quick Google search will show you that you can do it. And just be more um, considerate of what you're doing. So you don't need to throw away all your plastics. You can choose to use reusable um, items. Um, a simple shopping bag. Exactly. Well, I mean, no, we don't have a choice. Because, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's true. And just try to buy things with less plastic packaging because you see two things and they're literally the same thing. But this one has plastic wrap, then it has like another wrap plastic inside, cover, and then yeah. another one. And then Com there's this one that is less. Um, so yeah. Choose one that's less. Just to be more like look into your daily actions, the little ones, and see where you can make a difference. Because a lot of people say, oh, but you know, everyone does it. What so I why do, should, yeah, yeah, what I do not really won't add, happen. Yeah. But if you do it and then you influence someone else to do it and they do it, it becomes like a domino effect. That's like subscribing. If you subscribe and you influence someone else to subscribe, <laughs> it will become a domino effect. So I am. Alright, so what are your final thoughts on being comfortable with be being uncomfortable? Well, I think, I don't think anyone ever just reaches. Like, it's not like a goal that you just reach once mm -hmm. and it's constantly thriving. Every day. Once you do something that you were previously uncomfortable with and you do it enough, you start to become comfortable. And but like, you still oh, have to reach and continue to do things that you feel are uncomfortable. Because even for me, like right now, I was so nervous before because <laughs> interviews and on camera, they're not really my thing. But, but you're, you're, you're doing great. You, all, you even interviewed me before <laughs> we did this interview. Um, but it's just constantly thriving and doing your best and putting... Honestly, the worst thing that can do, happen is that you fail. And if you feel you can just try again. And I think we need to kind of step away from our oh, ego and, you know, our oh, embarrassment. Because that really holds us back. Because you're like, oh, I don't want to do it. I don't want to embarrass myself. Try. Embarrass yourself and done. Try. Because when you come back greater, people are going to remember that. Amazing. Yeah. And my final thoughts are basically what she said. You have to, it's a constant thing every day. Keep on doing it, keep on trying. Yeah. Because if you don't try, you'll never know if you'll fail or not. And if you fail, you can always try again. You never want to end your life with regrets. Like, thinking, what happened what, if, mm -hmm. you know? And now you're going to tell me what Spice would say if she saw a guy that she liked. <laughs> I thought you forgot. I, I thought I got nice. you. It was, it was at the top of my head through the whole interview. <laughs> In my head, let me tell you what I see in my head. So, should I say a man that she like? And in her head, you know how her spice go on in there? <laughs> in her head, she's just thinking about him and everything she does. She said, Yes, I saw me going with the problem. I was like, Yes! <laughs> and this is where we end this interview. Yeah. <laughs> Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Mm -hmm. Tell all your friends. Comment and everything. Yeah. We, yeah. Need, we need the positivity. You need, you know? As much as he knows that he's doing a great job, you need to remind him and you need to tell him, you know, your thoughts, what do you like, what would you like to see? You know, we are, you know, we like that. We, like, like that, we sure. love, we love comments. Exactly. All constructive comments are um, accepted. That's the word. Yeah. Alright, thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, tell your friends. Thank you for joining me. It Thank was amazing. Yeah, her backyard mm. is nice. You know, breeze. <laughs> and she has a, a dog. And she was like, oh, the dog can probably come to me. And I was like thinking it's a nice little, you know, little doggy cat. It's the dog is. Like, I have a big dog. <laughs> like, yeah. she can pull up this chair. <laughs> she, sorry. But yeah, have an excellent day. And thanks again for watching. Take care.